We're ready to have the discussion on Voyager now, and the reason why I wanted to do it is because I explained it in a few last couple of episodes, where, um, not episodes, but videos, and I discussed the fact that, um, Voyager was, cr I, I had no fond memory of it, I said it in the videos about my collection, and let me explain to you why. Well, first of all, Star Trek Voyager, when it first came out, was made with some of the worst packaging possible. Just plastic that would crack really easily. And I know, I didn't buy the first season first. I bought the first season three first. Stupid of me. When you're, when you're a kid going back probably 15 years ago, you would um, you do things differently. And now that I think about it, I would have never done that. I would have followed it in order at least. Um, but that's what I did a long time ago. Always repeated sets. Well, I noticed that these sets would fall apart a lot. This is one thing I hated about it. Now, it really wasn't just Voyager. Deep Space Nine has some really bad casings if you buy, if you bought them individually. Those fall apart easily. Um, I never bought TNG on DVD, so I wouldn't know about that. Um, I wouldn't know about an Enterprise, although the Enterprise sets look to be fairly decent. When you look at the outside, it's all made out of, everything's made out of something different. Um, but that's the one thing I hate about it. But then once you watch the show itself, it just becomes repetitive. Voyager is not oh, I should adjust this a little. Voyager is not a show that you can watch like 20 times over again and still be satisfied. Um... You can do that with TNG. I'm not particularly fond of TNG. I don't think it's my favorite, not even close, but I definitely could say you could watch that 20 times over again. Um, and people make fun of Star Trek Enterprise, but what's so wrong with Star Trek Enterprise? I think it's actually a pretty good show. It's Scott Bakula is a tremendous actor. So take, take that into consideration, too. Um... Let's, I'm going to go over some characters, for instance. The one number one character, I well not the number one character, but the character I want to start off with first. The worst character in Voyager has to be Kess. It's nothing to do with the actor, it's the, it's the whole role. The whole character of Kess was really bad in Voyager. It didn't fit in any way. She left the show in season four, and I don't care what they tell you in those tabloids and all that other gossip or news articles, wherever you read, I think she was pretty much forced off the show because she was a character that people didn't want there anymore. And let's face the fact, um, most of the time when they mention Kess in Star Trek Voyager, they aren't mention, mentioning her name fondly. They're mentioning it because it sucked. Um, what other characters? Neelix. Now, Neelix was a funky kind of character, but to tell you the truth, I wasn't too fond of his character either. I really wasn't. I thought it was annoying. I thought I was what I when I was dealing with was um absolute, you know, it's almost like he if he belonged like as somewhere that, that that would run a daycare or something. He was, he might have been a good good kids character, but Voyager wasn't shooting for the kids base. So, um, making Neelix really made no sense. Just saying. Um, uh. Um, there's so many people. Uh, Captain Janeway, I don't, I'm not going to say she was horrible, but she's a mix at best. A lot of people agree with me too. I, I hate to say it, but the, the truth is she's a mix. Either you don't like her, or you, um, uh, actually no, she's probably less than a mix. And it's not her because she's a very accomplished Broadway artist, and um, well not artist, Broadway, she did musicals before in New York. Kate Milgrove's a very, very talented person. Um, I just think she didn't belong in that role. She was in the Columbo back in the day. Mrs. Columbo. That didn't last very long, but that wasn't her fault. Um, this, who else can I um, mention? I don't know everyone by full name. It's, it's funny. After watching the show so many times, you'd think I would. Guy that played Harry Kim. That was a pretty good character, I gotta say. Not bad. Tuvok was a pretty good character. Um, Tom Paris, uh, I wouldn't say he, he was an ad, he wasn't the greatest character, but he was okay. Belana Taurus, I don't know why people talk about this, but 
I just don't like her character either. I really don't now that you think about it. After watching it over and over so many times, the love story between her and Tom Paris makes zero sense at all. Um, I don't know why they tried to fuse them together. Um, it makes no sense at all. They don't have anything in common with each other. It, 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 really, it really shocks me. It really shocks me. Um, the Doctor, that was a, a funny character to add up to. You know, what was funny is it didn't take much to act for his, for his part, even though he's a good actor. Um, think about it, because... Think about it. He didn't really... You don't need a personality to be the doctor. He started off with somebody who was really mad and ignorant and rude. And then over the, you know, seasons of Voyager, um, the doctor got back. Better with time, but that was the doctor. Oh damn! Who else can I name? I was leaving somebody out. Um, I'm trying to think now. Chakotay. I thought it. <laughs> it's been so long. I forgot that he was a good character. I liked him. I thought it was. I thought if anything, he would have been better as captain. Maybe if they made a guy like him captain. Um, and the reason why I say that is, is that, not because of who Cap, because Cap, you know, Captain Janeway is a woman, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with the fact, the way they portrayed Captain Janeway in this show, is she won every battle on luck. It wouldn't matter if Chakotay was captain either, but Captain Janeway seemed to have gotten by every battle, it was so close. Um, how can you, and then in the end they give her the admiral position, which is funny because you only know about that if you tune into one of the, um, epis um, actually no, you know that at the beginning of Endgame, but they show it in Nemesis too and all that. Um, but she really wasn't a captain that accomplished much by herself. And, and let's think about the whole concept of Voyager itself. It's 70,000 years away from the Delta, um, not the Delta, the Alpha Quadrant. It needs to get back home. How does that little ship get back? It's not a battleship. If you're talking Star Trek terms, you look at the ship, it is not a battleship. Um, not even close. It is a research vessel. Look it up. Look, go to the Star Trek Encyclopedia online or go to Wikipedia. It's a research vessel. It doesn't have heavy, heavy weapons or shields or anything like that. So how did Voyager manage to make it all that time without getting blown up? Um, you have the Kazon, uh, which I thought the Kazon was a great enemy, but they didn't last very long. They lasted what? Oh, I'm trying to think now. Maybe two, three and a half seasons? I don't even remember now, but they weren't around very long. The Borg, there were some really good Borg episodes in Voyager. i got to give credit to that. Um, oh, who's that other one? The Herogen, I think they were called. All these enemies in Voyager seem to escape them all. Sorry. And the only reason, and they couldn't even come up with a good plot at the end of Endgame. Spoiler alert. alert. I'm, if I'm, I spoil it, too bad, I warned you. Um... In Endgame, the only way, reason why they got home was because they went through time and stole the technology. That's the only way they could get home. Janeway herself, in the the present time, had to go into the future. She would have never made it. She would have never made it home. They said it would have took. Um, in the and in, in the beginning of Endgame, they give a toast and they say twenty three years in the Delta Quadrant. No way that would have happened. I'm sorry. Star Trek's being a little r r unrealistic here. Um, from what I've seen the entire show, Voyager itself got minimal amounts of upgrades. They did get a huge scanning technology. I forgot. What was that, that big scan thing they put in like season 4 or 5? I don't even remember what the damn thing was called. Um, 7 and 9 helped build it. Um, oh. I forgot what it was called, but um, that was one of the only huge, huge upgrades they made. Um, they did build a shuttle in Star Trek Voyager, which was called the Delta Flyer. That was kind of stupid. Uh, I don't really um, it, it did serve a purpose for the missions, but 
overall, I, didn't, I think that was kind of dumb. Um, overall, Voyager should have lost a lot of battles. Tons. What about the battle when they fought the Equinox? That, that was kind of funny. I, 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 I look at that back at that episode, and I look at those two ships. All right, I admit I didn't do any research on the Equinox. I'm not going to. I, I, there's really no reason for me to. But that ship looked like it could have beaten Voyager. And probably could have if it wasn't so weakened by getting in, um, to battles with all those aliens that it in common and stuff. Um, people can, I, I can... How do I rate the captains? See, that's a tough one. Well, not really. Um, number one would probably be Captain Picard, in my opinion. Not to say, um, Captain Kirk would be second. Uh, Cisco has no personality at all. So I'd have to rate him at probably fourth. So, no, third would be, um, I like Captain Archer just because I really like Captain Bakula as an actor. I mean, Scott Bakula as an actor. And, um, I think he did a wonderful job. I know we got to go shit, shit on by, um, what they did with his show, but. Hey, I think he's a, he's a, my number three captain. And Janeway would be number four, and Cisco would be number five. And the reason why I named Janeway so low is because, like I said, everyone says she's accomplished this, she did that as a captain. No, it was all luck. Voyage's home was luck. I watched the show. I, en I enjoyed it the first few times, but after you watch it three or four times, if you're someone into Star Trek... You start to realize this show isn't that good anymore. It doesn't have what it um, once had. And, you, and then you look at it and you say, wow. Holy crap. You know, how did Voyager make it back? It, it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> there was some good, there was some notable episodes in Voyager, but let's say the earliest notable episode... I don't even remember the exact name. It was um, when they went back in time on Earth in California. Um, Future's End, I think it's called, or whatever. That was one of the earliest, uh, one of the best episodes that really like kicked off everything. And you're saying, two old seasons of a show and you can't get that. I think that's one of the best ones I've seen. It was really interesting. But hey, who knows? Um, what else can I say about Voyager? Um, seven and nine, people were right. The, the seven and nine character was kind of, I, I think, was kind of awkward. They just said because Jerry um, Ryan was good looking that she was the only reason she was on the show. That's completely wrong. Don't even say something so stupid. You know, she's a very accomplished actor, too. She was on another show oh, a couple of years ago, and she'd been on it for a long time. I forgot what the name of it was, but she's a very accomplished actor, so that's something rude to say. Um, but Seven and Nine was a good character. Somewhat. Now, I wouldn't say completely, but somewhat. Uh, what else can I say about this? Um, people are wondering, why haven't they released Star Trek Voyager in Blu-ray? It's not going to happen. And it's, I, they're not telling you, these companies are not telling you the real reason for it. Um, obviously you have to convert all the footage over that's old from shows like TNG and well, The Next Generation, Voyager, and Deep Space Nine. Um, but so let's say that it was already done in the, the current formats we use now and it was easy to put on Blu-ray or anything. I still, still don't think they would do it. I don't think there would be enough of a fan base, for, especially Voyager, to sell it on Blu-ray. How many people would actually go on buy it? Even huge Star Trek fans, if it's them, not their favorite Star Trek, they're not going to buy um, Voyager just for the hell of it, when they already own the series on DVD. Um, maybe they will. That's if they're big Voyager fans. Only if they're big Voyager fans. Um, that's just kind of stupid. If you go up to the other series, like um, Next Generation, they that was a... People just were so obsessed with it. They didn't even want to finish it, from what I understand and read. They didn't want to finish the Blu-ray releases, but they pretty much had no choice because they were charging people like $80 a season, so if they don't finish it, people are going to be pretty pissed. 
Um, but yeah, that was a bitch. That was a bitch right there. Um, they released Enterprise supposedly because it mo most of it was made in HD, so it was an easy project to do. Um, the original series, it wasn't that hot, I guess, but it had to have been hard to turn, redo the original series because everything was on a whole different aspect ratio and all of that. Um, yeah, so Voyager is not going to come on Blu-ray anytime soon. I, I predict it never will. And if you notice that TNG, when it comes on TV, some of you have an HD cable, cable box and television, you know, watching an HD stream, sometimes you'll see it in HD. You never see Voyager in any higher quality than what it is right now on DVD when you watch it on television. It's actually really bad. Um, you have to watch a TV that looks so terrible. Um, they could at least find a way to up-convert it for, um, television. I don't know, um, maybe they do only do that on Cox Communications, um, maybe Verizon or DirecTV does better, but I could tell you that, um, it's a disappointment. And, uh, <sighs> makes me shake my head. It sucks that, like, Vo and another thing that really plagued Voyager was it really couldn't do any crossover episodes with, um, like, with uh, people from other, um, other, how do I put it, other Star Treks, like TNG or Deep Space Nine. They did do it with, um, Mr. Barkley, and they showed the other people, but they weren't all together. They were all separate scenes, and... It kind of sucked. They couldn't come together because they were in a whole other part of the galaxy and Voyager had no chance of speaking to them. That 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 was another far-fetched thing that I didn't really like about Voyager was the fact that it took them all that time and just after all that time they figured out a way to speak to them. All, that's impossible. That was way too far away from each other to be able to speak to somebody, even in space terms and Star Trek terms. There's no way in hell that um, t someone can speak to somebody from tens of thousands of light years away. Just that That's why Voyager went beyond the realm of possibility for its own show. And that's why I think, like, you you might not feel this way now. Try 10, 15, not 10, 15 years from now. Try watching the show four or five times over again, and then go back and look at it. And tell me if I'm not right. Some of this stuff is off the wall, like... I understand certain times, there's always going to be a sci-fi show when someone does something that's impossible. It's happened in Next Generation, like when they fought the Borg and stuff. But, um, Voyager seems like on a weekly basis that's what happened. And, um, that's not, and even for Star Trek terms, that is not realistic at all. So, good luck with people trying to prove that to somebody, you know. Man, good luck with getting the sets now. It's impossible. They're all binded into one big book now. You can't buy them individually unless you go on Amazon or eBay. I recommend you do that. It's better to have an individual set. So if you take it over to someone's house to show them an episode or something, you don't have to, and you break it, well, that's only one season instead of the whole thing. Actually, no, you're only taking one disc out at a time, but still. I hate when they do that. Compact box sets together really a bitch and it's rude because um because it just is and you know what the only people that are going to buy these are the ones that never owned them in the first place if you own the individual DVD sets for Deep Space Nine or TNG or um Voyager you're not going to rebuy them all over again I mean that would be stupid you'd have to be an idiot to go to the store and buy the current sets they have just go online if you have the money to buy all this other Star Trek stuff you can go online and buy them individually. And if there's a price problem, buy the condensed version. There's going to be no difference in quality. And I'm almost 100% sure that there's no difference in special features or anything. That's another disappointment. And all the time I watched Voyager, there was one season. I forgot which one. I think it was six. And it, come with an, it came with an extra special feature disc. I think I still have it somewhere. Um... What do I have to say about that? Well, what I have to say about that is is that not enough. They had like 45 minutes and an hour worth of footage on it. You have a, a show that's on for seven seasons and they can't offer you anything. That's that one, one biggest disappointment with Star Trek for me 
is that when you buy all these sets, they never have enough special features. It's always added on stuff from previous ones. So if you're, um, so say Star Trek Discovery, which is on right now, you're getting, say you, you like the special features. I thought they weren't that bad. Um, the next time it comes around for a re-release in the future, when it gets released again, you're probably going to see the exact same special features on that too. So for Voyager, it will be nice to have some special features, something to look forward to. Um, you know what's great about Voyager, what's kind of an interesting fact about Voyager, many people would not notice this. All the hardcore fans would. VHS, it was actually on VHS for many seasons. I don't know if it was the whole series. You know, it might have been, because the show stopped in 01, and I think, yeah, VCRs were still being used then. I remember I have the first, the second season on VHS. I lost, like, half the cassette tapes, but... <laughs> It's funny, I have the whole set. I think it's pretty neat. It dates back to that. Obviously, TNG, Next Generation dates back to that. And Deep Space Nine probably does too. But you know what's funny? I've never seen a Deep Space Nine VHS tape before. Never. I've been to flea markets. I've been to all kinds of places. I've never seen a uh, Deep Space Nine VHS tape. I've, I've seen um, other kind. Actually, you know, I don't see any VHS tapes around anymore. Even that flea market, they, they really, they don't sell them because they know no one has a VCR. They're always selling a DVD. Um, one tip I want to give to people is take care of discs. You know, I actually have a complete second replica of Voyager because it, I lost a disc to it for some reason. It got messed up. And um, I had decided that. And plus, the discs kind of got roughed up. They still all work, but... I decided I had to get another set. This was a f several years ago. I got the other set, so I got a backup of Voyager. A show that I don't like, and I have a backup of it. How stupid is that? Well, if I had known how much I had, dis I had a distaste for the show, maybe I wouldn't have done it. I probably would have anyways, because as a DVD collector, you always want to make sure you have the complete set of, of a certain series or all the Star Treks. And what else about Star Trek? Um, the holograms was heavy in Voyager. The holodeck, big time. Um, I never quite understood. I never understood it. What I don't understand in Star Trek is that they kind of repeat themselves. The holograms take over the ship in Voyager. They take over the ship in TNG. Um, it just seems like how many times can you do the same concept in each series? Like before it gets old. Um, I like the episodes, don't get me wrong, but uh, how many times are you going to co um, <clears throat> copy it? This new Discovery has hope, though. I have hope. I saw the first season. I liked it pretty good. I forgot what the woman's name was, but she's an, um, she's a good actor, so I, I, I don't have any... Um... And once again, Jerry Ryan is not a bad actor. If anyone keeps saying that, that's constantly BS. People like to, just because she's a woman, they want to treat her badly, and that's wrong completely and utterly wrong. Um, I read about something about her signing autographs for charity at one time. I thought that was pretty nice. But okay, too long. My advice to you is um, a lot of people um, might not get bored of a show if they watch it four or five times. That's okay, but I do. You don't have to make any fun of anyone over it. Um, that's why nowadays I just move on to different shows now and watch them. I can't keep watching the same show over and over and over again. It's very irritating. I'm going to go to the 25 minute mark. If I did that, um, I'd go kind of crazy. I had just watched, I, I watched Deep Space Nine on the whole thing on Netflix. And I watched it the whole thing again on DVD. The reason why I watched it all on DVD again was to watch the special features. Okay, bye bye.